episode some time ago about the Red Bull plane swap of how this this stunt involved two planes and two experienced skydivers. They were going to climb to 14,000 feet, go, uh, go into a full 90 degree nosedive, jump out of each other's planes or jump out of their planes, swap places mid skydive into the other person's plane and then pull up and fly off into the sunset or whatever it is they're planning to do. But some new things have come to light where this stunt itself, as wild as it was, it needed to have something very important in order for them to actually execute the stunt. And (laughs) what important piece of information is that you're wondering? Well, it would be the FAA's approval. (laughs) Maybe maybe the most key piece of information. Right. (laughs) Right. And we, and we said that on the previous episode, like, well, at least these guys are going about it smart. Like they're implementing controls. They got safety features and they, they filed their flight plan with the FAA, which we at the time, and I think everyone else at the time thought they were approved to do. <laughs> and we were spooling up about this because we, we never would have thought the FAA would even green light anything of this sort. And Turns out we were right. <laughs> Turns out we were right. <laughs> Turns out we were right. Like they absolutely did not uh, approve them to do this stunt. Now, th- this is actually coming uh, coming to light more and more as the investigation comes forth. But so they were they submitted their plan to the FAA on X day before the stunt, obviously, and then they got denied to do it, and then they did it anyway. <laughs> So, I, I take it take it for what you guys think, but like doing a stunt like this for one is already bad, and at least they did they had some level of mm. com- competency to put safety features into this thing and actually. Well, engineer. yeah, and they were partially successful. One of the planes, the the um, I can't remember which which guy it was. It was oh, it was Luke Akins. Luke Akins was able to. Uh, uh, get out of he took off there's there's a blue and a silver uh, aircraft blue and a silver Cessna Luke Akins was in the blue jumped out was able to make it over to the silver get inside get it under control and land it successfully uh, however um, what was the other guy's name uh, I think it was Andy Farrington yes or something like that um, he, he was not able to get into the he came out of the silver and went to the blue and was not able to get into the blue and thusly the blue went straight into the dirt. Uh, I mean, almost cartoon looking. I mean, making light of a, of a crash or whatever we can, we can do that because no one was hurt beyond the plane. But I mean, it looked just like you would picture in a cartoon plane crash, like the Wiley coyote slamming into the side of a cliff. Like that's how you, that's how you picture it. <laughs> right. And the good part was, is nobody got hurt. That's the, the, the one reason why these guys are not in jail. And for anyone who would attempt a stunt like this, they would totally go to jail if someone got hurt. But thankfully, no one did. The only, the only thing they lost significantly was the equipment and the plane. Yeah, it looks like the uh, blue Cessna has somehow got into a spin, whereas the silver aircraft did not, did not get into a spin. And, and we talked about that in our previous episode. Like, I would figure this thing would spin in some way, shape or form as it's tumbling towards the, uh, towards earth. But they have those massive barn doors. They mount to a fixture in the back. So when they nosedive, they open that. I'm going to call them a barn door for lack of a better term, but I think they were calling them like, uh, some sort of belly spoiler or something like that. Um, to keep it relatively straight in the nosedive. This one just got into a spin, but still when it hit the dirt, I mean, it went, it went straight nose first and stayed that way. It didn't go on a wings, a wing tip or whatever else, and, you know, land all kind of cockeyed. It, I mean, it went straight nose in. Yeah. So if you guys look it up and see the pictures, I mean, it, the barn door worked. Right. That and also the planes were fitted with parachutes along with the, the pilot slash jumpers. So at, at some point in the, in the dive, the plane, deployed its chute so at least when it crashes it it's not gonna just obliterate and destroy it's and like just go everywhere like pieces and shit everywhere 
Yeah, I mean, so it, was a t- it was a total loss. Don't get me wrong. That, that airframe, I'm, I'm just going to say, from my perspective, was non, non-recoverable. Yes. Uh, probably be just as cheap to go get another one as it would be to try to repair this. But like Six said, the parachute safety mechanisms activated and thus kept it from uh, grenading into a, a, a million different pieces. Right. And so now with, with these pilots, um, since they did all this without the FAA's permission, they're going to be... Uh, yeah, there's an having, investigation. Yes, definitely an investigation is going to be happening as to who, what, when, where, why, and then why did you do it without our permission? Who, What sparked you to do this without permission? And then they're most likely going to call into question the airfield that cleared them to leave. So why, why, why would this come into the, into the fray? Well, it's, it's likewise, like whenever you plan a flight, you have to submit your flight plan to the FAA and to the local airfield or whichever terminal you're leaving for all sorts of safety reasons. And then they're probably going to call into question who in the airfield cleared them to do it despite not having FAA approval. And then the, the immediate uh, action right now is to suspend or revoke both of those pilots' uh, licenses. And I believe it's uh, Aikens, the, the pilot, Aikens, the pilot, is going to be paying a close to a $5,000 fine for ab- abandoning his aircraft and uh, operating in a reckless manner. You know, I'm surprised that's, that's, the, that's as high as the fine is. Unless right? it was higher. And Red Bull is going to eat the majority of that fine. And, and I'm be curious to know what, what Red Bull has to face up to since they're obviously a larger company. Right. For <laughs> these kind of stunts and then, you know, moving forward. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, they've obviously done a bunch of stunts like this before. And I'm sure the guy who jumped out of the balloon in space and flew back to Earth. Um, I'm sure he. I'm sure they had to file some sort of flight plan for terminal velocity. You know what I mean? Uh, right. Of right. some type. So they've, they've obviously been able to do this stuff in the past. They've done crazy stunts. They've flown uh, uh, an extra 300 through a tunnel. You yeah. know, I mean, I'm, I'm sure. So it's just this one just wasn't wasn't bought off on for some reason or other. Right. Or, or it could very well be like with something as big as Red Bull, they were just like independent contract people. Oh, do, maybe. Do, do some crazy shit like this, right? So that way they can say like, well, they're not employed by us, so wash my hands, you know? Uh, yeah, they, yeah could, they could have easily said like, oh yeah, in our contract it said they would do everything according to law and whatever else, and clearly they didn't, so we're free. Right, that, that could very well be the case. We don't know. Uh, we, we do know that this is still ongoing, and probably by the time this recording is released, we, we may have some extra information on that but uh as of right now the immediate uh uh action is to revoke these pilots of their license incur them a fine a uh, close to five thousand dollars and then they're going to be looking into everything they did up until the point of the crash because we already know the result and that's with any investigation we already know the result of what ha- already happened what we want to know now is what led up to it like everything that led up to it and then what do we do about it and i want to say like uh in our previous episode about this we talked about like what's the next step like if if they were to accomplish this or not what would be what would been the next step for other people right and and i think the faa's response to this is we don't want someone in in their backyard just taking their privately owned plane or somebody's privately owned plane and then pulling something just as drastic or daring where and yeah. possibly endangering lives and stuff like that. Yeah. They don't want Jago one and, and uh, Jag two taking their experimentals. They built in their garage out over the lake bed and uh, saying hashtag yellow swag while slamming a Red Bull and trying to pull the same thing, you know? Right. <laughs> Without near the amount of prep work. Absolutely. And then that's the one thing that's probably saving these guys, if there is going to be anything to save them, is they implemented <clears> so <throat> many uh, safety measures and so many controls that if something bad were to happen, then it's not going to be 
a loss of life at, at least. Yeah. And so, w- so I'll recap here what the stunt was supposed to be. All right. Uh, putting two Cessna 182s into a synchronized nosedive at 14,000 feet with an air brake deployed and autopilot set to maintain the dive. Both pilots were to jump out of their respective aircraft to attempt to reach the other aircraft in free fall. Um, the aircraft required a custom built autopilot system to ensure they stay on the correct trajectory. They were fitted with a speed brake and a larger than stand and larger than standard wheels to help create more drag to slow the rate of descent, as well as ensure uh, just to make sure that the uh, two guys diving uh, could catch up to them. Um, the autopilot was set to activate once the pilots manually entered the nosedive and switched uh, the engines off uh, to cause them to stall midair and there then start the stunt from there. So, you know, there's a bunch of stuff, right? So for one thing, when I read that a custom autopilot system, was that, you know, or, or is that through Rockwell? Is that through how, or did you guys develop your own, you know, what does it take to set your own custom autopilot system? That's not uh, OEM or some other, uh, you know, uh, certified aftermarket company approved by FAA. Right. You know, I mean, there's a, the, the investigation will obviously vet all that out, but, but just some questions off the top of my head right away. Right. And especially because now you have a custom made uh, system that technically makes the plane experimental. Right. And if anyone's ever seen uh, the experimental certification process for the FAA, there's so many different steps that you have to check to make sure that this is okay for you to fly. It is possible to fly an experimental plane says, hey, this is experimental. We want to do tests with this thing. But even with experimental planes, there's only so much you can do even with an experimental certification. And then likewise, the pilots who are flying in this have to be experimental rated, which uh, these two were. So at least they were doing things minus the, the, the denial from the FAA, mostly by the book. Mostly. There's more questions to this, but uh top face value the front of the book cover they've been sort they've been mostly doing things the right way and uh yeah i mean to start off both aircraft were registered to uh paratactics llc in the, the state of washington both do have experimental airworthiness certificates um so the fa has already vetted that side out so at least the aircraft were properly registered right and then a few days after the attempted swap, uh, Luke Akins, the pilot, he apparently had made a confession on Instagram saying that he received the denial letter from the FAA, but decided to go ahead with the stunt anyway without notifying members of the team and the Red Bull organization. Uh, oh, this, shoot. Wow. Yeah. So th- this is the quote from his uh, Instagram post. Uh, as project lead and chief pilot, it was entirely my responsibility to operate within the regulatory framework to ensure a successful outcome. I received. Dude, he put everybody's ass in the sling. Yeah. Uh, I received email notice April 22nd, 2022 from the FAA that a specific exemption was not granted. And then I made the personal decision to move forward with the plane swap. I regret not sharing this information with my team and those who supported me. I am now turning my attention to cooperatively working with or transparently with the regulatory authorities as we renew the planning and execution. Ew. <laughs> Ew. Yeah, that's uh that's pretty bad. And and like most people in today's environment, dumbass goes straight to social media but with condemning information like you just you shot yourself in the foot, you know. Right. Basically like, "Oh, I I don't know, man. I don't know what happened." Well, according to you on Instagram, on this date, you received the the denial letter. What uh, what do you want to say about that? I'm legally blind. Uh, you know, <laughs> like, I, what are you going to say at that point? You know? Yeah. And at least he owned up to it. Right. That, the thing that's the one thing I would say, at least he owned up to it. So like, uh, what, whatever that, whatever punishment that does come through, because the FAA can't. I don't, I won't say they can't legally cr- prosecute you criminally, but they can at least pr- uh, impose certain restrictions or or uh, bans on you. Uh, all that other stuff might be having to go through some kind of criminal litigation. We don't know the full extent of the law on this, but we do know that 
if someone were to pursue this criminally, they got a case because they got they got the evidence that suggested a crash. They got the confession. And all it really needs is just to figure out how bad we want to punish you. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty much a, a done deal at this point. It's just, you know, one guy's obviously getting a fine. Yep. But uh, that was Farrington, right? Uh, no, it's uh, Aikens. It? It's oh, Aikens is getting the fine. Okay, so... Yeah, so who knows? Maybe maybe he'll be taking the brunt of it since he was the lead for this operation. But here's something interesting, right? So if you, for those out there, like, well, what is a petition to the FAA for this kind of a stunt, you know, you mm-hmm. require? Well, so the FAA also identified, you know, in the denial letter, um, they failed to address compliance with any other applicable regulations in the Title 14 of the uh, FAA regs. Um, during the proposed operation, such as maintaining vigilance to see and avoid other aircraft in accordance with, you know, the part 91, 113. Um, you know, it says the FAA does not evaluate these deficiencies in greater detail because the petitioner does not provide a sufficient public interest case. So, you know, it basically says like, how are you uh, going to ensure that you don't hurt anybody else in this or hit anybody else in this? You know, you're outside of the vehicle, so obviously you're not uh, tracking radios, your collision avoidance systems, or you have a remote collision avoidance strapped to you for some reason. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't doesn't do that. It's just basically, it was it was it probably it seems like it was written in almost almost like, hey, we're going to take this up to 14 feet. We're going to kill the engines. We're going to nose dive it. We do have parachutes on ourselves and the vehicle. Um, we're going to jump out jump back in and land safely right. sign in crayon, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. Now, if they said something like, uh, well, there's going to be a backup pilot in the, in the plane, just in case they're like, oh, okay. So it, it's, it's risky. So, yeah. So somebody is there yeah, and can, can maintain control, but they're a secondary measure. Yeah. Right. It's like, okay, fair enough. Like there's someone in the play monitoring things as they go along to ensure nothing goes wrong. Got it. And that's probably what, I'm not saying that's what they should have done, but that's probably something that would have made it easier to get approved besides just jumping out and let the plane do what it wants. More or less, that's what happened is what. Let but the plane but also wants. they, you know, they have, well, they have that autopilot system, right? A, a custom autopilot system. Now, is that not an approved secondary because the human factor has been removed from the situation or or is it because it was a custom one and maybe it wasn't uh an approved you know because it was you know by faa standards because it was under the experimental badge true very true. I, I don't know you That's know there's some different different caveats and things to i would have to do some more digging on or or at least be the fa and know what those answers are Right. I think you're absolutely right. And I think another reason why they're, they're getting such heat for this, besides the fact that they, they cited all the reasons why this was wrong and why they denied him was, I would say, a few weeks prior or a few months prior, a, another individual decided to YouTube himself uh, crashing his plane into the hillside. Uh, this was covered by a whole bunch of other people, including uh, the Pilots Pandemic podcast, where... An individual either willfully or thought it was funny, like he or or he wanted to make a statement where he was recording himself. He jumped out of the plane and let it crash into the hillside, and then he just kind of you uh, showed a video of himself, like, "Well, I just crashed my plane, right?" And, and I want to say that individual pretty much wrecked it for anyone who even wants to do something where they're the sole pilot of an aircraft, and then they just abandon it for even yeah. if it's for a temporary. Or a short amount of time, <laughs> so that's probably what uh, aided in ruining these guys. It, it may or may not, but to me, that kind of seems like it. Because well, we already had an individual who jumped out of his plane and it crashed. So, and then here's two of you now with two planes potentially could have had two loss of aircraft and two loss of life. Yeah, we gotta put a stop to this shit now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please like and subscribe. I just crashed my Cessna. You know, like. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, they don't want that to become the new, newest, uh, internet trend. Yeah. The and new I, and TikTok I fully, goal. And I, and I fully agree with him. Cause I mean, for anyone who knows, even a private plane, that's a lot of freaking money. 
And well, because then when does it stop, right? So you get two two rich kids with pilot licenses, and they go up there and say, "All right, we're going to instead of crashing into the mountainside, we're going to air to air crash it each other's planes. We're going to bail out. The planes will autopilot into one another, and we'll film it as we're free falling." Right. Or like I say, same two rich individuals. They try to mimic the Blue Angels or the Thunderbirds for some reason, and then they don't realize the safety protocols <laughs> that these these uh teams use, and then they ended up. Crashing into each other at Mach two or some shit like that, you know? Yeah, I it just or yeah, or just illegal mods, any of that, you know. Like they have like a really popular show, you know. There's some really popular shows on YouTube, you know, modifying cars and all that stuff and everything else, and you know, but sometimes those don't end very well, and the car breaks down and whatever else. Well, at least in that instance, you can kind of pull over to the side of the road, but. Uh, in a plane situation, it's a little bit more, a little bit more. You got to be certified for nearly everything from the work being performed to the inspection of that work to the flying mm-hmm. and all the above. So, yeah, yeah, that's probably, I can see why the FAA probably responded the way they did. Like, hey, look, we understand you guys are out over the middle of nowhere, um, but we just can't. We just can't have this becoming a thing yeah. or at least becoming a thing without all the prop appropriate safety protocols, procedures, contingencies, backups being vetted first. Right. Yeah. If you're going to submit the, like we went over the, over the, the petition, right. Uh, just make sure you put everything in there. Like, okay, Hey, look, we're going to have this, this, and that. Uh, if this doesn't work out, this is our backup. You know, here's what we're going to do. Here's our plan. Mm-hmm. Um, not just like, well, if we don't, what happens if you don't go back inside? Uh, we don't get back inside and the safety measures take over. Cool. So will your parachute, uh, stop the aircraft from impacting the earth at, uh, terminal velocity, uh, like 10 knots under. Okay. <laughs> you know, yeah, we're done. <laughs> the, the Red Bull division, uh, or the stunt division of the FAA is probably like, their minds are exploding, like mm. <laughs> having the red eye with the no- with the nosebleed and everything, like son of a bitch. <laughs> or they they were reading a petition first thing on a Monday morning, spit their <laughs> coffee across the room. I bet they put them in a frame and hung them on the door, like, "Hey, check this out." Right, like this can't be real. Is this real? Is I wonder like- if we could find that database of all like failed petitions. Right, I'm why sure they, they were I- failed. I'm sure there's some, there's some record of it. <laughs> like I could imagine some of the stuff uh, people have petitioned to do and then got denied. On the I just wonder if it's if it's public though, right? Because same thing we were saying. Like, does the FA make that public? Because they don't want people going in there reading and going, "Oh, I can do that better." Right. Oh, That's I see true. this. Stuff. I didn't even think of that, but now that I've read it, I can do that better. You know, right. I don't know. I don't. Yeah, that'd be a good question, and I can see the pros and cons of releasing it versus not because. I can receive the pro as this is awareness of what people are trying to do and you shouldn't. Or, and they could also see it as a con where like, like, just as you said, like, Oh, that's a great idea. Maybe if I just spruce it up a little bit, I, we can actually pull it off. Hell yeah. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> like, um, do playing uh, mock two or playing chicken at mock two. Like what? No, <laughs> terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> or, or guys, <laughs> Check it out, guys getting up there, taking the doors off like these planes are set up and air to air combating one another. That would be, you know what? I'm not going to lie to you. I would probably watch that YouTube channel. <laughs> um, they're up there, but they're with paintball guns and they're just cruising around trying to shoot each other midair. <laughs> right. Like some World War II dog fight, but instead of yeah, guns, some using paint, dog fight and stuff, they're using paintball guns or airsoft. Like <laughs> <laughs> throwing, throwing paint grenades out the window at the other plane as they pass by. <laughs> that's what they used to do in World War One. They used to fly around with six six shooters and throwing grenades out of their out of the open cockpits. Hell, that's what these guys. That would actually be a pretty sick uh, uh, YouTube channel. I remember. Uh, so out here in the SoCal desert, mm-hmm. there is a there is a Willow Springs Raceway, <laughs> one of the oldest raceways in America. The um, the uh, Top Gear, British Top Gear show. Yeah. Back when Jeremy Clarkson, James May, and uh, Richard Hammond were all the hosts of that show before uh, they got picked up by 
Amazon for the grand tour. They, they were doing a road, uh, kind of a, a, a tour of the South of the U S Southwest and, and different cars, but they go out to Willow Springs raceway and they had a couple of pilots out of Edwards air force base flying these old uh, Italian prop jobs, Mm -hmm. but they had like laser receivers on top of the car. And then the aircraft had, um, the firing mechanism for the laser. So these guys were driving around the track, trying to evade these planes. And these guys were coming in like a 10 warthogs trying to strafe them and seeing (laughs) how many times they could get hit. It was pretty funny. They got, the cars got wasted. I mean, you know, with the number of times they got hit, Mm -hmm. but, uh, but you know, air to air dog fights like that, that might actually be kind of, kind of, kind of cool. Almost like a uh, top gun, right? You get, you get it bought off by the FAA, but you get out there and you get a bunch of people who, you know, br- run what you run kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and get out there and just, just dog fight one another. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Right. Totally. I mean, I'm sure that they'll, they'll eventually, they'll probably get away with it for like maybe half a season before the FAA picks up on it or like, or some kind of, uh, aviation regulatory they're like you're doing what now no it's nice says i <laughs> right yeah. or or they got to have like so many controls right to the point where like it's almost not even fun to watch you know like uh they're only going like maybe uh cruise altitude speed i don't know like 50 knots or some shit like that right something real slow but to make it look cool they speed it up so like it kind of looks like they're you know do some movie magic shit like we're like oh okay they're going super fast but they're really not <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it would be kind of like it would almost it would almost be like oh, what if you had it to where okay you know run what you brung you're up there you're flying around you, you got two teams two teams of five five aircraft yeah last man stand, standing so to speak air quotes <laughs> um and you you know you got your set sector you've been approved to fly in between this elevation and this elevation uh, you get up there, you get, you know, both sides of the playing playing field, for lack of a better term, and, and just go at it, right? Mm-hmm. Now, now, how do you referee that? I don't know. Uh, how do you, you know, unless you have, like, the transmitter. So, if somebody gets hit, it's it's transmitted down to the ground. Mm-hmm. Pilot says, you know, you know, November 796, you know, XY, you're, you've been hit, you're out, and that person comes back to Earth. Now, also, what if... Hey, I'm up here and I'm having mechanical problems. Okay, well, the dog fight's lasting an hour. So get it on the ground and you have a maintenance crew down there trying to fix your 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 bird as fast as they can to get you back in the air. Mm-hmm. That'd be kind of a neat thing, almost like a, a, a NASCAR pit crew, but for yeah. planes, like, I need back up there. <laughs> right. Get me back up there now, right? That'd be a good simulation for all the war plane pilots, man. That'd probably be their dream right there, if they're still cleared to fly, that is. Right, yeah, I mean, you could you could start it off with having you know trained fighter pilots uh, up there who who at least know maneuver and whatever, but they're obviously not going to be in fast movers. They'll be in. I mean, you could put a, a limit. You could put a limit on on just like NASCAR does on size, engine size, whatever else to even even the playing field and make it basically on on skill set alone, right? Uh, not or, on uh, or what performance else is- of the vehicle. What else do they do in NASCAR? Restrictor plates. That's it. They put restrictor plates uh, on the yeah. on the cars too, so like they they can only top out at so fast, even though the engine itself can totally push out more. Like, yeah, you could like, do you could do uh, fixed propellers and 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 only one hundred and fifty horsepower motors or something. I don't know. You know, yeah. I mean, it'd be pretty slow ass dogfights. But think about the original dogfights of World War One. Hell, those were fabric covered aircraft, and they were they were out there shooting the shit out of one another. So. Right. With machine guns, um, no less. Like not even, yeah. big, not even big machine guns, just like run of the mill, like an average infantry uh, machine gunner will carry this kind of load, you know? Well, and like I said, half the time they had revolvers and they were flying around one hand on the yoke and one hand pointing at the guy next to him or above and below him shooting. <laughs> right. Hoping they got a, got a lucky shot, you know I mean? Cause it's a fabric covered aircraft that bullets traveling through the fuselage. That's true. Very true. <laughs> so it'd be kind of neat man that would be neat i mean if someone's got the the time money and budget uh, please invest some time see how, what it takes to make this happen because that would be cool <laughs> yeah, who, do I, who do i propose that to that'd be that'd be fantastic all uh, right like uh maybe like the same guys who control Mythbusters, or uh no what's that um it, it was like this uh future weapons or something like that um 
It was like, or it could be like mail call with Arlie or Ermy. Yeah. Yeah. Like one of those. That'd be fun. Yeah. That'd be sweet. That would be, be a cool show. I mean, I think, like I said, if you got mechanical problems up there, all right, the dog limit last last you're technically not out of the fight. You just didn't get shot yet. You went back to the ground to get repairs or swap planes. Maybe you're allowed one. You got one spare aircraft sitting on the ground per team. Pilot jumps over into that, takes off again. You know, it's a hot spare or whatever, and they and, the, and it goes. And then and then the goal is trying to get the aircraft fixed and that and the other pilot back in the air and then maybe that's one of the caveats right if you can get the plane fixed in that time now you don't have to bring down the hot spare you put up now you have the 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 tactical advantage of one additional aircraft very true. right so that would be a that would be a maneuver but only only if you have a mechanical problem you can't fake a mechanical problem just to get that one in the air right very true. has to be a legit something that'd be uh boy talk about a new amc competition uh, <laughs> right <laughs> right uh, uh, challenge holy cow Right, aerospace dog fighting, hell yeah! Uh, so that would be wild. That would That'd be, be wild. cool. So, move, moving on from this, uh, we put out a, a questionnaire out on uh, social media. You know, we asked, uh, "What sort of airplane stuff do you keep as souvenirs that may be considered weird to some other people?" And some of the responses we got were just—it was like almost nonstop for like tw- like twenty-four hours. <laughs> and I wonder what the souvenirs were these Red Bull pilots kept. <laughs> probably like the damage prop <laughs> their their life their, <laughs> their life, life and and lack of jail time maybe right. i don't know uh crippling uh fines until the da- the day they die maybe <laughs> 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 that's a terrible souvenir <laughs> that's terrible so one of them was he says he has a broken fuel pump that his teacher gave him from school so i guess like uh this one school gets a roundabout of so many uh, broken parts for the students to kind of familiarize themselves with. And then one of the instructors gave him a fuel pump they used in class. Like, here you go. Here's a broken fuel pump. Nice. That's, that's actually pretty cool, to be honest. Like, if I could walk away with some of the stuff that we had in our training classes, that'd be pretty dope. Especially, like, the cross-sections or the cutaways or the ones where, like, they took, like, a, a bandsaw to it and so you could actually see what the insides look like. But they're like the rotating assembly, so like the, it's a turbine engine cut in half, but it still rotates yeah. off of the electric motor real slow, so you can see how everything operates, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah I love cool. those. I would totally want to keep one of those. I wonder if you could take the fuel pump and turn it into a lamp or something. Ooh, that'd be a good question. That'd be kind of cool to have on your desk at work, you know what I mean? Like Absolutely. Uh, another one was they kept the floorboards from one of their aircrafts. And then they use the floorboards as shelving now. Nice. <laughs> that, that's actually pretty smart, you know, because some of those floorboards, they're pretty strong. But you know? do you use them in your house or like they in the garage? Now I'm curious, right? Just because knowing what I know of floorboards, sometimes they're not the most uh, aesthetically pleasing, yes. especially, you know, so you'd have to have like, if you either live by yourself, if you live with somebody else, you live by yourself, it doesn't matter. But if you live with somebody else, how did you get their approval to have them in the house? <laughs> <laughs> and or two i can understand if you're using them in the garage as, as stuff you know as shelving in the garage that's that's pretty good that's true um this, the same person said they also kept the skin off of a off of another aircraft um and it's some wall art that they're using now it's pretty neat <laughs> that is pretty cool that is neat um uh, yeah going with the floorboards i've seen some of them are just painted black and they're full of grime and i'm sure they cleaned it to some extent um but yeah, just because it's the, the color of carbon, it's not going to jive unless your whole house is dark themed. So yeah, something like that will most likely fit better in a garage or something like that. Uh, uh, here's, a, here's another person. They kept a piece of an oil filter at home so they can sniff it whenever they miss the smell. Uh, <laughs> do you need help? <laughs> you, you, you know what, no, though? I'm just kidding. <laughs> you, you know what, though, man? Like... Uh, I don't know what it is, but certain oils or certain uh, stuff that's given off by a plane actually smells kind of nice, right? Not not in a not in like a nice perfume. I would like spray this around my house, nice, but like compared to all the other shit, it's actually kind of kind of just yeah, it's kind of nice. Like uh, maybe maybe it's maybe it's the chemicals way of like tricking your brain right it's like yeah come try me kind of like antifreeze for dogs you know like they think it's great but it's actually killing them <laughs> yeah i get that way with um 
with uh, BP2380 and mixed with a little bit of exhaust, uh, exhaust, JP8 exhaust fumes. And that takes me right back to uh, Afghanistan. Wow. Mine, yeah, is kind of, mine, mine is kind of the same, but with uh, certain gearbox oils, like for helicopter transmissions. I don't know what it is, but when it's hot, it actually smells kind of nice. I'm like, well, compared to all the other cancer inducing chemicals, that is. But <laughs> now there's another one that takes me back too, and it's uh, um, I can't remember the full the full spec name, but we called it. It was 1300 L. It was a yellow. I mean, like mustard yellow in color. Uh, glue used for interiors. So if you had to do, you know, fix up interiors or re- redo, you know, side paneling, seats, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, God, once you got that stuff on, though, it was nearly impossible to get off. So it was all over your hands all the time, and it smelled. Uh, it was like a really potent smell. Like you would get, like, <laughs> like if you were working inside of a, a, a cabin and doing a bunch of fuselage uh, interior interior jobs and whatever else. Like you, you better have somebody come check on you because you're going to be high pretty quick. <laughs> come out of there all kind of fucked up, you know. Yeah, I, I remember coming out. I was in, I was in, I was on, we were on the flight line somewhere here in SoCal uh, one night, and I was inside probably two hours doing interior uh, work, and I come stepping out of the uh, out of the cabin back onto the flight line, and the guy I was working with who was working other jobs on outside. Um, Looks at me. He's like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, why? He's like, your eyes are fucking crooked right now. <laughs> didn't even realize, you know, I spent so much time in it. I was going to say like your eyes are like all swollen, like pennies, you know, like just like, I don't know what you're talking about, man. <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, what, What's going on with that? <laughs> all your eyes are all dilated and shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, an- another, speaking of interiors, uh, this one uh, uh, airport manager mentioned that uh, they used to keep the carpeting of their uh, interiors. Like um, I forget the name of the aircraft that uh, they mentioned, but they kept the carpet and they frame it or do all, all kinds of cool stuff. Now stuff like that's actually pretty cool because especially if the plane is discontinued, right? That interior can mm-hmm. probably, can probably be extremely nostalgic and valuable to certain other individuals. And uh, like another one of these listeners here, they said they kept the, the chicken plates uh, from uh, the old American Eagle, American Airlines um, insignia. So, like, oh they, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, <laughs> chicken plates. That's funny. <laughs> they stopped using them, so like they just like oh, I'm just gonna keep a couple of these because like it's either that or it goes in the trash. And um, certain things, you know, like again with the nostalgia of it all, like you will probably never see these again other than in pictures and paintings. And then here you are with actual piece of it. Like yeah, check this guy out. Huh. <laughs> Um, we got somebody else who said I've got some old flight manuals that needed to be completely replaced kind of a mix of the modern stuff and old Cessna from one from the 80s Um, that's pretty cool to kind of see how you know if you look at some of the old flight manuals from some of the older especially the small smaller aircraft right the uh, your private pilot sized aircraft Mm-hmm. Um, some of those old flight manuals, you know, they're, I called them all, all barn builds mm-hmm. back in the day. Cause they kind of were, and those manuals were very rudimentary and kind of left a lot of gray area and, and, um, uh, didn't pro- provide a whole lot, mm-hmm. uh, in the way of maintenance for, you know, sp- specifics and whatnot, but, uh, kind of, kind of need to look back on some of those then and see how much has changed in them now and how much information is there it's almost data overload um and i'm sure that's as a result of the faa getting stricter and more aircraft getting in the air over the years um and, you know and manufacturers going hey look you know we need to really step up our game and add the data in here for these people working because you know uh also you know probably mostly for legality reasons on there like hey if somebody does some shady work they can come back and say well the manual kind of said this but it didn't really say not to. Right. Um, so for legal reasons, they're probably like, yep, we have to put it in there specifically. So if anybody tries to do some shady stuff and go, no, you were following the manual. We had it in there. Right. Or that could also be because of like, um, like say overhaulers or people who actually um, tear this thing apart deeper than most. They're like, oh, here they go with this hodgepodge mom and pop bullshit again, you know, like, or yeah. uh, 
what do you call it? The knob and tube fixes, <laughs> you know? Yep. Like, no. Or, or like, I mean, you see some of them, like the, uh, the, uh, ducting, taking bleed air from the motors and putting it around the cabin, right? And through your, your coolers and whatnot, you know, so you can get air inside the cabin. Um, mm-hmm. hell, a lot of those were like taped together. <laughs> I mean, and then the tape just deteriorates over time. You got hot ass, you know, bleed air engine, uh, engine uh, air coming in off the engine. Yep. Running through those pipes and there's that, that tape's just going to break down. I, but you open up the floorboards and you look underneath at all those lines and you're going, why? Uh, why? Yeah, why, <laughs> why, why tape why? them, you know? Why, I get why it saving. It probably saved X amount of thousands of dollars saving uh you know neoprene tubing and band clamps but you know holy shit yeah um and that was another one specific uh that interested me or that piqued my interest was they kept the jar of their fuck-ups now some people might really find that weird like why would you keep a jar of your own fuck-ups right but for some of us you know like it's kind of like a progression in skill right like this is kind of like my lessons learned pile um, how do we say it shows that I've learned my le- uh, that this is the bad way this is the right way and then since then it's been good but you know we all fuck up uh, the first time or sometimes so I use this as kind of like a reminder that you know nobody's perfect and it's always a learning experience like it's pretty freaking deep man <laughs> that is, that's pretty cool like nope that one's like a swear jar yes but for your fuck-ups. <laughs> for your fuck-ups, yes. <laughs> um, um, we got yeah. broken. Somebody said, uh, where was that six, uh, about a fuel filter they kept from a King Air? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, uh, I have to, let, me, let me look for that one. Hold on. Go through them all here. Uh, they have an old fuel, oh, a fuel line, a fuel line filter from a King Air. Uh, it was made uh, a long time ago near where they're from. At an old arsenal. Just cool to have the name on it. Uh, pretty neat. So it's like something that's like kind of near and dear where they're from. They they notice that and like, hey, that's that's home, right? And where I'm from uh, has has its foot in aviation, and and I'm in aviation, and I, I get it. I get it. I'm I mean, from where I'm from, the birthplace of aviation. So uh, it's kind of kind of in my blood. That no, so yeah, that, that's true. Now, here's one that kind of grossed me out when I first read it is uh, they had a big bag full of uh, certain commercial aircraft first class silverware that they would find underneath the, the floorboards or the interiors. Like they'll drop them and get oh, stuck somewhere. That's cool. <laughs> and so, you know, like they'll whenever they have to gut the interiors, they'll find all these silverware and, like, and they'll take it. They'll sanitize it, do like this deep, dark, deep dive clean on it and then keep it. And like. That's kind of gross, but at the same time, you know, like you took the time to sanitize it, clean it. I mean, I'm sure you did a whole lot to it before you decide to actually eat off of it. But <laughs> you know but, what? Uh, I should have done that. One of the jets I worked on was for a uh, big social media tycoon. Uh, won't say their name, but they call themselves. They're the self-proclaimed king of social media. Yeah. Uh, and, and worked on that individual's jet several times. And uh, you'd find wadded up panties stuffed in like the side thing to the point where you couldn't stow the tray tables uh, stuffed in the seats, st- you know, in different places. Uh, Should have kept that bag of STDs, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> this was on his plane. <laughs> Just, it would have been like at this point having them all in a big Ziploc. It would have been like a freaking terrarium in there. All the shit. <laughs> right. Like all kinds of gross. <laughs> All kinds of mushrooms and shit, girl. Like, what is that? Like, well, this no. used to be clothing. <laughs> it's my terrarium. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like a coral reef, but a but a terrarium. <sighs> That's gross. <laughs> it's actually kind of gross. <laughs> uh, someone kept broken pieces uh, of windows. Um, that someone broke being stupid, and they had to fix. That's kind of neat. Uh, parts of seats and prop domes. Yep, yep. I'm seeing a lot of a lot of tread with like O rings and filters. You know, yeah. Like O-rings Here's a filter. propeller. Ooh, a propeller. One guy kept a kept an old propeller from an old uh from a UAV they had when they were in Iraq. Um 
kind of kind of unique looking. So I guess people are, are asking him a lot, you know, what the hell that's from. Yeah. Now, now the, this one's actually pretty. That's pretty small. So like, I can imagine what the propeller looks like. It's like looks like a fan. I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> it looks like is that a quadcopter blade. What the hell is that? Like, don't worry about it, man. Secret squirrel stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if it's one of those, if you know, you know. Right. If you right, I I I like those posts, but at the same time, I don't. He's like, well, if you know, you know. Like, but I want to know. <laughs> like, explain. Well, I I do that more often than I'm not. Like, if you know, you know. Like, but I don't know. I want to know. Tell me. Tell me. Tell read, me your read secrets. Me into it. Like, show me your ways. <laughs> Brief me. Right. Uh, um, fan blades from old Fockers and Embraers. Oh yeah, that's kind of yeah. neat. So with with fan blades and stuff, I actually seen pictures where people turn those fan blades into mirrors, or either mirrors or like uh, little end tables and stuff. That's actually pretty freaking cool. I have never not cool. once. I never thought of doing that, but now that I've seen it, like. Yo, who's got a pair of spare fan blade going on, you know? <laughs> or a fan blade assembly. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. That's uh, cool. Let's see. One of those. Plate from, a, plate from a Houston Services. Houston Services, Stewart and Stevenson's. Yeah, oh, sorry. A plate from a Houston Services uh, Incorporated and a Stewart and Stevens Toyuke. Huh. Wait, hold on. Maybe I'm reading that wrong. A plate from a Houston Services Incorporated, Stewart and Stevens. Tell you, nice, nice. I don't know if that's, <laughs> I don't know if that's two things or one thing. But either way, what part of the tell you? Because ukes are pretty, pretty big. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, let's see. Some of the other ones from uh, Facebook is uh, I used to wear a blue fuel line O ring as a bracelet for years until it finally broke. I mean, I've done that too. <laughs> that was kind of like the the crazy trend in the early two thousands was to wear uh, rubber bracelets mm-hmm. or. Or O-rings for bracelets. Hell yeah. I did it, man. I, I feel you. Uh, different clamps and Wiggins fittings. Hell yeah. <laughs> like, or use it as a... Imagine using a Wiggins fitting as a, as a wing. As a ring. Wow, as a wing. <laughs> <laughs> as, a, as a wedding ring. Imagine that. Like, oh, like you're proposing to somebody and it's just a Wiggins fitting. <laughs> 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 what a rip. Don't <laughs> <laughs> fuck. It's all polished up. Wow, honey, this is a really unique cut diamond. It sure is, baby. It sure is. <laughs> it sure is. It's made of carbon. Yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Somebody kept a pitot tube from an F-16. Uh, one individual kept the whole nose wheel assembly. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, how did you get that home, by the way? How did you get the whole nose wheel? <laughs> hey, where are you going with that nose wheel assembly? Don't, don't worry about it. The, Look the other way. The trash, air quotes. <laughs> My- why don't you mind your business? <laughs> <laughs> I plead the fifth, man. It just keeps on walking. <laughs> uh, somebody else kept scrounge hardware that I wouldn't call good enough to put back onto the plane, but still good enough for use at home. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I've done that. I, I have a whole little uh, uh, old coffee container, coffee uh, can that I keep those things in. I, it's it is you're right though you find random uses for them at home for god knows what you know have, but, have you ever caught yourself doing uh like doing installation jobs like you were working on a plane but it's not you know like example is like i, I caught her pin things if, if there's a hole in it even though i don't need to or i'll safety wire stuff even though i absolutely don't need to I'm like this is not gonna rotate it off what the fuck am i doing this for but just the fact that it's there <laughs> I, I just gotta do it <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being oh. scared. Go ahead, sorry. As I'm saying I'm scarred, you know, like <laughs> I have to do it. Like it's it's there, just do it. <laughs> yeah. Here's a really cool one. Uh an engine cover from a an a, a aircraft that went through an accident. But it's all That's painted cool. up and like uh looks like they painted the letters of it. It says Franklin on it. And it's That's got the number cool. of cylinders, uh the number from each cylinder that it covers. So this one's a five, three, and a one. That's pretty neat. That is really cool. I, those are oh, those on one side, are, and then it's got the two, four, and six on the other. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. That is real cool. I like stuff like that. Uh, let's see. There was another individual who um, kept like um, like weapons pins, like the weapons uh, remove before flight pins. I'm, I'm assuming oh, these are all fucked up. I, so I got I got one guy who 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 I work with that has a, a few of those. I'd I'd imagine they're a little bit fucked up because you would never just like. 
well, I'm just going to take this. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and then someone's like, where's the retaining pin? Or where's the safety pin? Ah, everyone's losing their shit. Here's a guy who kept, who, uh, he's got three propellers in his garage. Two are from a 310 uh, that had landing gear failure that caused uh, prop strikes. Uh, one's from a Cub where the pilot got a little happy on the brakes and it slid down the runway on its spinner. Oh, Ooh. my God. <laughs> talk about uh you know those motorcycles that do like endo so they're riding a wheelie but on the front on the front wheel yeah yeah the guy did that with a with a plane oh <laughs> jesus <laughs> uh he's also given away two other props that were prop strikes as gifts to friends that's pretty nice nice of you to do that i've been trying to get a prop strike thing uh for a long time i've seen a few of them and that blade just curls right over like shamu shamu's dorsal fin at sea world you know yeah um uh I think those are those are pretty neat. Those are really hang up neat. in the, hang up in a garage or just an old propeller in general. I know one of my bosses um at one of my very first jobs, uh the platform we were on when they first came out with them, they had wooden propellers. Um Ooh. and then they advan- uh, eventually moved to <clears throat> on that specific airframe composite propellers. Wow. But initially they were fixed <laughs> excuse me fixed uh wooden propellers and he had um one of those mounted on the wall above his desk and i, I always thought that was kind of neat uh heritage you know kind of showing where he started at and everything else um i guess most of the other ones were either uh scrapped in a museum or other people took them home for their own you know wall mounts or whatever but i always thought that was neat It'd be cool that to have really, one of those uh one one of the coolest ones i've heard it was actually on an Instagram story that's long disappeared and I should have screenshotted it was um, they kept a cylinder head from one of the aircraft that broke a speed record. Mm-hmm. I think it was a, I think it was a P 51. I can't remember which one it was, but like, that's fucking cool. That's history right there. Like, like this, the plane that this part belonged to was the one that broke a speed record. I would have loved to keep something like that. Right. Or even just like a, a piece of the composite from an SR-71 or some shit like that, you know, like that would have been freaking dope. So to have something like that, that's like, that's not just nostalgia, that's history that you have in your hand right there. And then for the average onlooker, they're not even going to know like, oh, it's just another piston head. Like, oh, but this is the piston head. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so we haven't, do you have, we haven't talked about if we have anything, do you have anything you've kept? Uh, yes, I do actually. So uh, I actually have a tail rotor drive shaft that used to be about three, four feet long and it had a huge hole in it. So we just decided to cut it up into a couple of pieces and turn them into beer mugs. So, and I think you've seen it. Oh, I have uh, seen that. Yeah. You used to have it on your desk. Yeah. So we took, so we took that drive shaft, turned it into, I think maybe two or three beer mugs. And that, that was probably like the, one of the coolest ones that I got. Um, Wasn't the handle like a 50 cow around? Uh, no, it was a 20 millimeter round. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was, that, that was the dopest one of the whole thing. Like, hell yeah. Tell her drive shit. Oh, look, here's a giant bullet. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. That was probably like the coolest one I got. There's some other ground stuff like uh, broken hardware and, and stuff like that, but that's probably the coolest one I got. I think for me, I don't know if it's cool or not, but it it's just reminds me of a day that I was there. So we, uh, we had the, we did an engine change and we pulled one of the engines out that had just gone through overhaul, uh, out of stock, slapped it back on, um, you know, went off on its first flight was maybe an hour into its flight and pilots called and said, Hey, they're, they're RTB. They, you know, oil, oil pressures, oil level and and pressure is depleting rapidly. Uh, they're coming back like, okay. So, you know, it comes back and then you hear the code red card. Like, oh, what happened? Like, hey, we lost, we lost all power. We're, we're on batteries at this point, dead sticking it in. So they were able to land it barely, but they were able to land it safely. We towed it back in and just oil was, was just puking out of the bottom of the cowling. Uh, once we, once we removed the lower engine cowling, we found a lake of oil in there and a bunch of metal uh, fragments. Also, the top cow had a big blown hole through the, the composite. Um, so, what had happened was is 
whoever installed the push rod uh, tube O-rings rolled the O-rings or pinched the O-rings and oil, they, they split, oil puked out of them, uh, thereby losing oil and pressure and the motor overheated, uh, seized the pistons in the cylinders, the crankshaft continued to turn, snapped every connecting rod and punched the connecting rods through the top of the engine block and sent the turbo through the, uh, through, which was mounted on the top through the upper cow. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, dude. I'm, like what the fuck? <laughs> on the plus side though, like the, the crew lived and not only they lived, they were able to come in unharmed and then, I mean, shy of the engine, but the air, the air well, so, was- so fortunate all the way around is this was a, a UAV. Oh, so, so regardless, the air crew would have been fine. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, you just look at it and you're like, oh my God, what the hell happened? So that our little investigation quickly found that the, those push rod too. And, and it, and it had, that wasn't, they're pretty easy to roll. So oh, okay. a, most experienced people know to, to go and look at those. But unfortunately we had a new crew install that motor and didn't, didn't verify them. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyways, long story short, uh, the, the co-pilot for that flight, he came out and he collected all the fragments of the engine block and the, and the sheared um, connecting rods and whatever he could. And he made like like jewelry out of that shit. Wow. So he made out of, out of 550 cord safety wire and polished uh, broken engine components. And he made he made uh, jewelry out of it. So I, I have a, a necklace <laughs> that's got piece of the the motor uh crankcase on it and some other guys like got the like the pilot because he 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 got the coolest one which is a it was the connecting rod sheared but it was all braided like twisted up really neat looking uh he got that um you know since he was able to to bring it back in one piece but yeah that was the memento that i've kept among you know hardware and whatever else but but probably the cool just because of the story behind it and being there for that and the location we were in. That's uh, that's my little memento. Oh yeah, I mean, like again, it's 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 sen- the sentimental value because there's a story to it and it's personal to you or it's pers- or you understand the history behind it. I think that's what majority of us keep the souvenirs for. Like this either was a problem aircraft and we keep kept pieces of it. It was a fuck up that we did, so we kept it. Or like in your case, like yeah, everyone was lucky to not get hurt or, and then we just kept piece of it to kind of remind us like, yo, this, this could happen again kind of thing. Yeah. Now, but, now we, uh, you know, a lot of our uh, ones we've read off today, you know, with our, our listeners who have uh, chimed in some of the small stuff, right. It's, you know, becomes desk ornaments and, and things like that and, and mounts on the wall. Uh, but some of the bigger stuff like our homie with the, entire nose wheel assembly what are your plans for that thing <laughs> what are you gonna do with that you're gonna make a coffee table out of it or is it just gonna sit in the corner and collect dust and, and you bring it out when you've been having a few beers and you want to laugh with your friends uh because i'm laughing at that that's hysterical with just a massive wheel assembly uh turn uh, it into a, like a giant bar stool uh like a bar stool you know what i mean just yeah like- bar stool like what's what's the goal with that <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm curious to see, like, you know, like, oh, this is what exactly what it is. Oh shit, that's actually pretty pretty damn smart. Well, I feel stupid. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I've seen some stuff right where people yeah. take when people have taken it, like, why would you take that? That's dumb. And then they come back with it, like, oh, see, look what I did. Like, oh shit. Nah, hey, and then you start thinking yourself, like, hey, when's the next time we're gonna find one of these again? <laughs> I want one. Right? Too. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So we we covered quite a lot, and again with uh, some of the chimes from our our uh, listeners, and like to round to round up stuff, like we talked about the Red Bull plane swap incident of how it could have uh, easily been prevented, and or they could have uh, not done the stunt at all because of, of uh, being denied by the FAA. But what what are your thoughts on that that specific issue, like? Was it okay for them to do it, even despite the FAA? Could or should they have waited to try the FAA or implement some other type of controls? Like on the plus side, they no one got hurt, which was the probably their only saving grace in the matter. But uh, well, what are your thoughts on that one? And then likewise with the nostalgia uh, souvenirs, 
right? Some of the stuff that we've mentioned and other listeners have mentioned, they may seem weird to a lot of people, but we, we, we've seen some pretty weird shit <laughs> uh, go oh, yeah. in our, in our, in our time, in our past. And weird shit continues to happen, <laughs> sadly. <laughs> but, uh, what sort of stuff do you keep as nostalgia or what, what, what do you find nostalgic about a certain aspect of a plane and what sort of stuff do you have? Right. Uh, any other closing thoughts for anything MVP? No, I really appreciate the uh, turnout. We got, um, people submitting their, the, the mementos and things that they've brought home with them. Uh, I really like reading that stuff and I love, I love covering it on episodes. It's, it's cool to see what everybody else is doing out there. So, Please hit us up with your own stories and stuff you've got going on uh, in your own personal lives. I know recently we just got a really nice long letter and a picture from another team uh, that was at the AMC competition recently. Uh, they were out of Wichita. Uh, yeah. Uh, a school in Wichita. Yep. Um, so really cool to see that and hear their experience on it. So please, everybody, um, you know, you know, hit us up and give us give us a. Uh, kind of a, a, a synopsis of what you got going on in your career right now. And, and uh, we'd love to cover an episode on that. I'd like to just, Hey, here's what people around the, around the world are doing right now. Absolutely. And then, and then get those conversations started amongst, amongst the whole, the whole community. Absolutely. And like MVP hit the nail on the head on that. We love reading stuff like that. Telling, telling us your story, telling us your experience, some of the stuff that you guys have found or have uh, seen happen like we love hearing that stuff and some of it is is very uh beneficial for everyone to know about and kind of spark that conversation amongst each other like what sort of common al- common stuff do you see or what some uh, issues that you've been seeing and how did you solve it and stuff like that we love we definitely love hearing that stuff so like when mvp said like hit us up whichever is easiest for you on social media which we're always active on emails that we we're very good at responding to those or just shoot yep. Or just hit us up on our website, whichever is easiest for you. And if you uh, subscribe to our Patreon, that would give us more uh, latitude and ability to do more stuff for everybody. Like uh, it could be more episodes, merch, uh, more stories, more uh, interaction, whichever. Patreon has been like our saving grace to like be able to do more stuff. And we do have some stuff lined up for everybody in the very near future. where just looking through to see what we can do with it. But please, by all means, like uh, if you haven't heard of Patreon, please look that up and then look us up on Patreon and then support us any way you can, because that's more or less how we're keeping the lights on and coming up with new stuff to uh, interact with you guys with and put out to you. Yeah. I I got one more thing to add to this. uh, Just thinking about it while you were talking Um, for mementos. So one of the guys I work with, um, one of his hobbies is, is he has a metal detector and he researches plane crashes, uh, all across the, uh, Southwestern United States. Um, and specifically the desert in SoCal where we currently live. Um, he goes out on the weekends and he'll find these crash sites in the middle of the desert and he'll go out and metal detect. And he finds some really cool stuff. And, um, one of the things he gave me from his finds was uh, bullets and part of a belt from the, that holds the bullets from a P-38 Lightning that oh, crashed wow. back in uh, 47 or 8 out here, I think, 1947 or 8 out here, uh, post-war, um, you know, testing, pilot training kind of stuff. So uh, pretty neat. Pretty neat stuff. Um, I was just thinking about that. So I wanted to throw that in there at the end. Um, uh, so everybody could hear that. But yeah, appreciate everybody uh, giving us their stories. Love to hear more. And uh, can't wait to do an episode on those. Most definitely. And on that note, thanks again, everyone, for listening. And we'll catch you guys next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. We'd like to take this time to thank our patrons for supporting our show and allowing us to continue to make episodes, maintain our gear, and create merch for all of our listeners with special thanks to Erica Lamont, Chris Hawkins, Ryan Frushauer, Dan Schubert, Jenny Dignan, and the ladies of the Dick Talk and Mimosas podcast. Thank you all so much for your support and patronage. Visit our shop at cancelformaintenance.com and grab some swag to show off both your support for us and your prowess as an aircraft technician.
If you have ideas for the show or you'd like to be a guest on the show, visit our contact us section and send us a line. We will do what we can to get your ideas or yourself on the show. You can also follow us on social media such as on Facebook at Cancel for Maintenance, Instagram at Kanks, that's C-A-N-X for Maintenance Podcast, or on Twitter at CXMX Podcast. Check out some of our affiliates like Rockwell Time, where they make both rugged and classy watches to fit your lifestyle. Use the code CX4MX and save 10% off your purchase. Support us on Patreon. Our patrons get exclusive perks such as access to our Discord, discounts and early access to merch, special patron-only episodes, and so much more. Thank you again so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.